a very good evening to all my listeners at the outset wishing you all a very happy holy 2025 so today of our topic of discussion is a very important yet confusing topic for most of the residents and it is important not only um, for the patient management but it is also an important topic in the practical exams as well as the theory ms exams so the topic is a uh, follow up post molar suction evacuation now before getting into the depth of the topic we have to quickly brush up about the uh, gtd now gtd as you all know is gestational trophoblastic diseases these are the tumors which arise from the trophoblastic tissues now they can uh, range from a variety of spectrum ranging from benign to malignant condition benign condition is known as molar pregnancy or hydatiform mole and the malignant counterpart range uh, include invasive mole choriocarcinoma pstt that is placental site trophoblastic tumor then ett that is epithelioid trophoblastic tumor and also a new tumor has been added that is atypical placental site nodule today we shall be focusing more, uh, only on the benign Uh, part that is hydatidiform mole also known as molar pregnancy now this can be either partial or complete partial as we all know is triploid in nature it can be 69 xxy 69 xyy or 69 xxx now complete is usually diploid and uh, when you uh, see on the gross uh, pathology the complete mole will be having the classical grape like vesicles whereas the partial mole can have some amount of fetal tissue uh, the most important thing to remember is that the complete mole has higher chance of uh, converting into a gestational trophoblastic neoplasia that is the malignant uh, counterpart so the complete mole has 15 to 20% chance whereas the partial mole has 3 to 5% chance of conversion into a gta so whenever a patient presents to us in clinic with usually it will be a early pregnancy a vaginal bleeding what all the differential diagnosis we should keep in mind first is abortion next is molar pregnancy this is ectopic pregnancy keeping these three uh, diagnosis in mind differential diagnosis in mind we will uh, do a per, per abdominal and per vaginal examination per abdominal examination when you do you have to rule out guarding rigidity tenderness which are more classical for ectopic when you do a post speculum examination you have to look at the os any uh, plus uh, any uh, passage of products of conception you should also ask the patient for any passage of any products of conception in complete mole the patient gives a classical history of passage of grape like vesicles so this has to be noted on post speculum examination when you do a pb examination you should look for the size of the uterus usually in complete mole the Uh, in fact in the molar pregnancy the size of the or the height of the uterus is more than the period of amenorrhea after doing the pabb examination you have to uh, do a ultrasound which is extremely important uh, the classical finding in the molar pregnancy is the snowstorm appearance which is more classical for complete mole also you should uh, order for other panel of investigations the first and foremost to be a cbc where you can know the baseline hemoglobin level also you should do her thyroid profile which is extremely important uh, just a, uh, the molar pregnancy is notorious to cause hyperthyroidism because the beta hcg which is the tumor marker of molar pregnancy uh, causes a surge in the thyroid hormones so we have to do a thyroid profile also you should do a lft rft and chest x ray also has to be done in order to rule out metastasis uh, to chest also very importantly you should do her blood grouping and rh typing because during suction evacuation there is always a chance of heavy bleeding so blood should be arranged after doing all these investigations and confirming from your uh, clinical as well as from the ultrasound reports uh, you come to a diagnosis of molar pregnancy always send a baseline uh, beta hcg which is the tumor marker of molar pregnancy 
Usually it is more than 1 lakh in case of complete mole and in partial mole it will be slightly lesser than that. So after getting the baseline uh, beta NCG done, you are going to do the management. So very importantly, uh, we have to remember this that the management of choice in case of molar pregnancy is suction and evacuation. During suction and evacuation, there are some precautions that we must take. First of all, the preparation for the preparation of cervix uh, and its dilatation, prostaglandins or dilators must be used only before, just before the evacuation is done, or else it can lead to uh, torrential bleeding. Oxytocin should not be started before suction evacuation. Always after you perform the complete suction evacuation, then you must start the uterotonic or oxytocin. <coughs> also, remember that the largest size of cannula is always preferred for doing suction. So, after you have done the suction on day 1, you are going to send the next beta HCG of 48 hours after suction. So, that is on day 3. Then you discharge the patient. But the most important part is the counselling you have to do during discharge. You have to tell her to come back with the beta HCG report after 7 days. You have to do a repeat beta HCG. This has to be done again weekly till 3 consecutive values are normal. Then once 3 normal values have come, you have to do a monthly follow up. Now when it comes to a complete mole, if the values normalize within 56 days, then you have to ask her for follow up, that is monthly follow up, for 6 months from the date of suction evacuation. If her values do not normalize within 56 days, then she has to follow up for 6 months from the time of the normal value of beta HCG. Next, what about partial mole? Partial mole, they have the guidelines are very simple that once the values are normal on two samples at least four weeks apart, you can stop the follow up. Remember that the average time it takes for normalization of the beta HCG is nine weeks. During this, what is the important advice that you will give to the patient? You have to advise her for contraception and not to have pregnancy till all her uh, uh, complete follow-up of her beta HCG has been done. Now what is the contraception of choice? Barrier method is a very good uh, technique but since there is a higher failure rate we advise her for combined OCP that is combined oral contraceptive pills which is MEC1 uh, for molar pregnancy. Now why are we so worried and why are we so vigilant about this beta HCG values. This is because as I have already mentioned that molar pregnancy has a risk of converting into its malignant counterpart that is gestational trophoblastic neoplasia. To avoid that we need to follow her beta HCG. But then how will you recognize if it is a GTN? So first thing is when there is a plateauing of beta HCG for at least four consecutive values measured over a span of at least three weeks that is day 1, 7, 14 and 21 then it is a uh, pointer towards GTA. Next, if there is a rise of beta HCG uh, for at least three consecutive values measured over a span of at least two weeks on day 1, 7 and day 14. Next, if there is histopath confirmed uh, report on choriocarcinoma or there is beta HCG detectable even after 6 months post suction and evacuation then it is a pointer towards gestational trophoblastic neoplasia. The uh, about GTN uh, and its management we will talk in some subsequent videos but I hope that now you are very clear about how do you follow up after uh, suction evacuation in a molar pregnancy with the beta HCG and which day you are supposed to call for your patient for follow up and which day you are supposed to advise her to repeat her beta HCG. Thank you and have a nice day.